Hi there, I'm Dr. Chris. And this is my second video on fiber size and seismic acquisition. In my previous video, I showed a few limitations of explosive sources and constraints placed upon them in many areas. I also showed that a vibrating source, while not packing as much energy, can be a good replacement for explosives. However, in this short video, I will show some general limitations of vibrosize that are easily surmounted by explosive delivery methods. Here we go. Now, I was not too kind to drills in my previous video. However, vibrosize trucks do face similar restrictions around features including structures and riparian zones. Trucks, they can just get a little closer depending on regulations. In riparian zones, care still has to be taken for ecological purposes. Further, anywhere that a heavy vehicle can go, say a farm combine or similar multi-wheel vehicle, so can a vibrator truck. However, there are places that even the most chained up vibe truck can't go. In this case, a dense forest. Instead, a small mobile or heliportable drill can be brought in to access and navigate through difficult terrain, or terrain that has not been prepared or has legal limits for preparation placed upon it. This is quite common in frontier locations around the world. Further, while five trucks are still agile, they aren't good on steep slopes, and there are many areas where a heliportable drill is the seismic deployment method of choice. In this case, steep hills and even mountainous terrain are impassable by a vibrator truck. Again, these are frontier locations. The next situation is when water or saturated soil are located and are somewhat of a hindrance to vibe truck operations, such as beaches, muskeg, or swamps. But if you are acquiring data in a cold area, you just have to wait till winter comes, let the ground freeze, and the vibe trucks are back to being a good choice. For the most part, these two delivery methods are evenly matched on the ground. Fight! What is more dramatic is the difference between an explosive source and how a sweep is produced. Admittedly, this is where my black box of science comes into place. I'm no engineer, I'm not quite sure how it's done. I can only make some cool special effects. Mathematically speaking, we can decompose an explosive impulse into a sweep. If we zoom into the wavefront, we can isolate the minimum phase wavelet and look at its frequency content. In Fourier terms, if we decompress the wavelet using increasingly longer time delays from lower to higher frequencies, we can produce a constant amplitude signal with the same frequency content as the wavelet. This is the sweep, the signal produced by the vibrator, roughly speaking. The major difference? The wavelet from the explosive source has a much, much higher amplitude in a shorter period of time. To recap, vibrosize and explosives have their uses in different environments. If access is not an insurmountable issue, vibrators are an excellent source which leaves almost no mark on the ground. If access is difficult, say, in steep or remote areas, then you gotta GET TO THE chopper with a portable or compact drill. Now, there's no way to cover every single scenario, this is just a little insight of the possibilities. More videos to come. If you like my video, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, add me to your LinkedIn, or even better, share my videos through your networks. Till next time, I'm Dr. Chris. Keep rocking.